Today I will be showing you how to get a sub 10 minute mile and I'll be showing you three tips that I use every day in my own running. The number one tip that I can give you guys is consistency. Make sure you guys run often and everywhere. So if you only run once or twice a week, yeah, you'll have some progress, but it's not going to be the same kind of progress that you would make if you ran, let's say, three or four times a week and you scheduled your runs out. If you schedule your runs and you already know when you're going to run, your body's going to become more adaptive and it's going to have time to rest. You don't want to run two days in a row, especially if you're running hard, because you're going to break your body. You're going to get shin splints, or you're going to hurt your hips, whatever it may be. You don't want to run every day, especially when you're first starting out because your body is just not used to it. Be consistent, create a plan, but make sure you follow that plan and have a day in between your runs, especially when you're first starting out so you don't injure yourself. All right, it's easy, I know, but um, a lot of people go off and they like to they like to run all the time, especially when they're first starting. They're like, oh, this isn't too bad, but they get a week or two into it. I myself was one of these people, and they realize they're getting injured and they can't run every single day because it hurts too much. You have shin splints or whatever it may be. Just run every single, don't run every single day when you're first starting out. Have a plan and follow that plan. Three or four times a week, that's all you need. You basically want one day in between each, um, each run so you actually give your body time to recover. Um, so actually probably three days a week would probably be better, especially when you're just starting out. So the second tip I wanna to talk to you guys about is about pacing your own runs. And what is pacing a run? Well, pacing a run doesn't mean that when you first start the run, that you start sprinting. No, pacing a run means you're consistently giving them the, about the same effort throughout the entire run. So you don't burn yourself out at the very beginning and cause yourself to hyperventilate way early in the run when you should be, when you should just, you should feel it, but it shouldn't be so overwhelming that you want to quit a quarter of the way through the run. Like that, that's doing it wrong. That's when you know you're pushing yourself too hard too early. So pacing a run would be like um, running at an easy jog that you can maintain for the mile. So by the end of that mile, you should finally be like, you know, huffing, puffing a little bit. You should feel it by then. Early in the mile, you shouldn't be hyperventilating because you should be running at a pace that's um, sustainable for yourself. I myself also made this mistake when I was a new runner. I would go off and I'd try to run as fast as the people who were running six minute miles and then not even a quarter way through the run, I would fall out and I would start just hyperventilating for the rest of the run. And it's because uh, your body is not made, well, you're, you're not ready to run those insane speeds. You can keep up with, to, with them for a quarter mile, but you can't sustain that for a whole mile. Your body's just not to that level yet. And you wanna run at a pace that's good for you. You wanna push yourself but you don't want to run so hard, which you're hyperventilating a quarter of a mile way through. If you can't do a mile at all right now, it's probably because you're not following this tip. So next time you go on a run, try pacing yourself, all right? So if you know you can do a 12 minute mile, then set your pace. You can use your watch, use your phone. You can set a pace. I like to set my pace on my watch because it actually helps me run the pace I need to be so I'm not going too fast or going too slow and it, it's, it's really good to run consistent. So this third and final tip I'm gonna teach you guys is one that I realize now myself I really needed. And it is to eat properly. Yes, I, I know, right? right you, you should always be eating right, but a lot of us do not. And before a run, if you're eating pizza or something big that you know is gonna clog you up, it's not gonna be fun. Like you could do all these other tips I just taught you guys, these two other ones, like consistency in your running, and pacing yourself but if you are um, eating let's say two plates of Chinese food right before a run you're not going to perform nearly as well and it's going to hurt a lot more you're going to get cramped up you're going to get um, out of breath super easy and it's just not going to be a good time eating your greens your proteins and uh, just balancing out your nutrition will surely help you um, actually run faster and longer distances without getting as tired quickly or uh, hyperventilating as fast. I had a race a couple, yeah, about a week ago and it was a uh, two mile and it's basically to see how fast you could go 
and I was aiming for like a 1430 for a two mile, which is like a, a seven minute and 15 second per mile pace. And I ended up getting like a 749 because I ate, <laughs> I ate Chinese food the night before and I felt so bad that race throughout the entire race that I realized instantly how important it is to eat uh, the correct foods. You can um, eat whatever you want as long as it's healthy. Just watch what you eat and follow these other two tips and you'll be golden. Like it will be, <laughs> it will definitely help you out running wise. And you, you'll find that your runs are going to improve a lot, all right? But give it about two or three weeks, you might cut two or three minutes off your runs. Actually, maybe even more. So um, just give these tips a try. Be consistent about your runs. Um, make sure you pace yourself and then eat healthy. If you do all these three things, it doesn't matter what you do on top of that really as much. As long as you do these things consistently, you're going to find that your runtime is going to come down significantly. All right. That's basically what I've been doing for like the past seven months. And you, you can see, if you go back to my other videos, you can see it's helped me out a lot. And I can run um, way more and way further than I could ever before. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed what you watched today, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And comment down below how your journeys are going because I'm actually curious to see myself. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.